We went to city council with a lot of the architectural community, and this is where designers were very important, and said, let's build a new structure that joins this suite of historic bridges. Let's build it out of concrete, show what concrete can do in our moment in time, and let's do something significant. As we were working on the design, I became more and more convinced that the bridge itself could act as a kind of larger social public space for periodic events, both informal and formal over its hopefully very long life. So my name is Deborah Weintraub. I work for the City of Los Angeles for the Bureau of Engineering. I'm the Chief Deputy City Engineer. I'm an architect by training, not an engineer by training. And I've worked on the project where we're standing today, the Sixth Street Viaduct, for approximately 10 years. The Sixth Street Viaduct joins a suite of historic bridges that the Bureau of Engineering, my organization, built starting in the early part of the last century. And it was an effort to build sturdy river crossings after some major flooding. And it was also part of an effort to build really significant civic structures. The bridges, which the Bureau of Engineering designed and constructed, were all concrete, which was also at the time a new material, reinforced concrete, and they all had different definitions of form. They were in the Beaux-Arts tradition. So Meryl Butler, who was part of the Bureau of Engineering, was the lead designer on the project. The Sixth Street Bridge, which was the last one built as part of that effort, unfortunately at the time, they used a concrete mix, which had inherent in it a chemical reaction that would lead to decay of the concrete. So early 2000s, it was noticed that there was spalling and pieces of the bridge falling off. And we went through really a 10 year process of investigating what the source of that spalling and decay was. And the conclusion was the bridge was seismically deficient and it had to be replaced. The Bureau of Engineering took on that task, led by the city engineer, Gary Lee Moore. The bridge was funded with federal highway bridge funding dollars, and it was really to correct the alignment of the bridge and to correct its seismic deficiency. What the Bureau of Engineering did was took that mandate, and with the city engineer and myself, we said, we're going to spend $100 million purchasing property to realign the bridge. What are we going to do with all that property? So one of the things we did very early on was identify the land underneath the bridge for a future park. The bridge itself, I proposed to the city engineer that we do an international design competition, so we proceeded down that path. I actually wrote the brief for the bridge 10 years ago. I looked back at it and said, this bridge has to perform the functions that the federal government wants it to perform, but it also has to be something that brings new places and new opportunities for community participation. And I also wrote into the brief that the team had to include an architect as part of the leadership of the team. We knew this one way or another would be a landmark structure. We got nine proposals from teams from across the world, and we had three very interesting designs which really did address an engineering perspective on how to build a new bridge and very much social perspective, how to bring people on the bridge, how to make it usable for community events. Michael Malson with HNTB, who were the primary structural engineers, at their interview, they stood at a whiteboard and drew a ribbon of arches across this floodplain and said, this is what we think we ought to build. It 
is a reference to the old arches that were much beloved. Ten years later, we got it done. The basic approach of that first ribbon of arches across the river held through with a lot of effort on a lot of people's parts because during design there were things that had to change. We changed the nature of the foundation system in order to get the bridge base isolated, the first base isolated bridge in California. We changed the angle of the arches and that was for constructability and for cost reasons. It went through a lot of conversation during design. I will say that it takes an army to deliver a project this size and I would be remiss not to mention the woman who really got this built, our project manager, Julie Allen, and the lead structural consultant, and she's from T.Y. Lynn. It's probably one of the few infrastructure projects of this size that has had so much female leadership. I'm very proud of that as well. It's very important to me as I see the bridge open that it is serving as a community space. It is a place people are walking every night. For ADA compliance, we built these wonderful ramp structures on both sides of the bridge. We use that opportunity to take people under the belly of the bridge so you can get up close to this massive structure and experience it. And we've just put out to bid this 12-acre park, which builds in a whole host of community amenities in and around the, the underside of the bridge. When we finish that project in a two and a half years or so, then we have the whole suite of intentions that we started 10 years ago. I'm Michael Maltzen. I'm the architect of the Sixth Street Viaduct and we're standing on the east side of the viaduct, really right at the beginning of where the bridge starts. We became involved when the project was at its very beginning. The competition to develop a design for the bridge was just beginning. The city had created a fairly extensive brief in terms of what the bridge was meant to be. Much of that had to do with its relationship to the city as a whole, what it could be as a piece of civic infrastructure. We joined a team with h and Hargraves Jones Associates as landscape architects to develop the design. Our role was really to be involved from the very conceptual beginnings of the project and to develop an approach to what the bridge could be beyond just a more typical piece of infrastructure in the city. When we began contemplating the design with the larger team, one of the goals that we had was to rethink infrastructure itself, to question what the role of infrastructure could be in a city like Los Angeles, which is so defined by its post-war infrastructure. The design approach was looking to grow the responsibilities, if you will, around infrastructure, to weave it into the daily life of the city and to connect it to pedestrians, bicycles, the neighborhoods around it. The characteristics of that original Sixth Street Bridge, the thing that everybody knew about the bridge were the two arches over the LA River. What we thought was that it wasn't enough for the new bridge to just celebrate the crossing of the river, but that the full length of the bridge and its connectivity was something that was really at stake in the design. And so we took those original arches, in a sense amplified them or extended them from one full side of the bridge to the other, trying to say it wasn't just about that singular crossing, but it was really about the connectivity across the full length of the bridge that was really the, the idea, the goal for the viaduct. From the very beginning, one of the things that has been such an integral part of the overall process was the ongoing conversations with the communities that surround the bridge. The city undertook that work 
as a part of the development for the brief itself. And there was an enormous amount in that brief that had already touched on a number of concerns that the community had and a number of their goals to create more civic public space, more park space as a part of the overall project. When we got involved from the competition phase forward, much of that input from the community formed the foundation of our original design responses, how we thought about the bridge and its parks connecting to the life of the community. One of the most important events was actually when the original 6th Street Bridge was being closed, just before it started to be taken down. There was a large event that happened on the bridge. It was really a going away party for the 6th Street Bridge. The bridge was closed. There were thousands of people here, concerts, food trucks, low riders. It felt like this was the center of civic and public life in the city. That event was an incredible indication of the kind of life that the bridge I felt like could have uh, in its, its next iteration. So much of what we've done, much of what we've thought about in the bridge is, yes, on a daily basis, it's a thoroughfare for pedestrians, cars, bicyclists. But on a regular basis, it can turn into a plaza, piazza for the city. From the very beginning, the bridge has been used in the widest array of uses with bicyclists, as pedestrians, with cars, lowriders have used the bridge and have been drawn to the bridge. They've been connected, it feels like, to the bridge in physical ways and in emotional ways as well. That range of uses, the way that people have connected to it has gone beyond what I think anybody really expected or was prepared for. It speaks to this incredible need in the city that people want to have a place where they feel like they are seen, where they are connected to the city as a whole, to the life and the vitality of the city. While I expected a lot of life to take place here, it's been more than I expected. And I think as the bridge continues to live into the future, we'll see the way people connect to it expanding in ways that we didn't necessarily expect. But I think that's real. I think what it says is that the bridge is evolving from a physical element in the city to maybe the city itself. <laughs>